Hey, what's up guys? This is Astronax and I'm back with another Epic 7 video. So in this one, I want to showcase Chloe. She's a 5 star, max level. And that's one battle. The damage from her magic nail skill 2 seems to add uh, to her own damage. Everyone that's doing extra damage because of magic nail seems to add to her uh, own damage. So I'm just going to do a run and uh, talk about how... Uh, that skill works so yeah magic nail her skill too she applies it uh, it cannot be resisted and whenever any hero deals damage to that target that has this debuff that is applied she just applied it they deal an extra 2% of the targets health and damage it's always 2% it is not affected by uh, defense uh, down debuff it's not affected by your crit chance uh, and your crit damage so it's two percent hp and damage and it seems to be like pure damage it's always on the wyvern in stage 11 the wyvern has 139,308 health so 2% of that is 2,786 damage. So every time she applies the magic nail, uh, she applies it, it doesn't count, that attack doesn't count, but any attack from anyone will add. There, she just applied it. You see, it gets uh, added to uh, their damage afterward. Now, it's gonna add it to Kisei's, boom, just did it. And we'll do it after her ultimate. Boom. Dual attack, boom. Dual attack will not trigger it twice. The damage is added together and then it triggers. Boom. After it turn our guard, boom, boom. I have a unity set on my turn our guard now, and I did increase his crit chance. It was pretty low. There's no magic nail anymore. She doesn't have any skill up. I'll show you the gear for my whole team after that. I have the Dream Joker on turn our guard and on Chloe, and I'm I'm using. Uh, I could be using a uh, Daydream Joker on uh, on Kisei, but I'm using uh, Dust Devil. Unfortunately, Dust Devil, when uh, when it procs, it doesn't trigger Magic Nail twice, only once. It would be really nice though if it did it. But I mean, if it did that, yeah, I mean, I, I guess with, yeah, it would be too good. So, yeah, wow. Chloe, number one in damage. Tarnar Guard is doing um, quite a bit of damage. He's got unity. His speed is low, but he, uh, he has more attack and more crit damage. Now, more crit chance. He's slower, but it's fine because the dual attacks are triggering. The thing is, when he triggers a dual attack, he gets attack buff. And as you might have noticed... There's no one that apply attack buff in this group. There's no attack buffer. But Tarnagard can gain attack buff by himself. There, he did it. He got attack buff. But the attack buff gets applied onto him after he deals the damage. Because, I mean, uh, that would be really good. If it, <laughs> That would be too good for a three-star hero. He's already quite amazing. So let, let, let's not push it. Let's... <laughs> Let's not push it. Yeah, I'm liking the change in his stats, but Chloe, yeah, no skill ups. She has some um, really high uh, damage uh, potential just by herself, just with her multipliers. Unfortunately, I don't have them uh, with me right now, but uh, she's got some of the highest multiplier in the game. 
and Magic Nail acts as a debuff. So let's say you want to run Chloe with uh, three support heroes. Let's say you've got a knight in front and you're using uh, two soul weavers to uh, keep your knight alive. And Chloe is applying Magic Nell. And she's doing damage. Everyone in the group will deal uh, extra damage because of Magic Nell. And if you're running a group like that, you, you, won't, have, uh, you won't have enough damage to break the barrier in, uh, in most cases. I mean, unless you have super high speed and you're running a bunch of Daydream Jokers, uh, I, I, I don't think you're gonna break the barrier. But you can survive the damage from this because you failed to break the barrier. Because uh, you're gonna have a uh, tanky group and you will rely mostly on Magic Nell and the damage from Daydream Joker to eventually kill the boss. But Magic Nail acts as a debuff, and you can. It will make it much easier to have three debuffs on the Wyvern uh, most of the time, meaning that the Wyvern will deal quite a bit less damage. It says that if the caster has two or fewer debuffs, greatly increase damage dealt. So you have that going, and I mean, let's say you do have attack break attack down debuff that would even uh that would cut the damage in half just from the attack down debuff and then you have three debuffs so maybe you're actually taking 25 percent of the damage instead of that uh like when he's doing those triple attacks you're gonna take 50 percent of the damage 50 percent less damage if you have attack down debuff on the wyvern but if you have three debuffs, it's going to lower that amount even more. And it's going to make it so much easier for you to uh, sustain. Wow. To sustain the damage that he does. That is really good. She's not even a six star yet. But she's got some, some, some pretty good gear. She doesn't have my best gear. But she has some pretty good gear. Now, let me just talk about the fight mechanics. So, it's easier to, when you bring ice heroes because you deal 30% uh, increased damage to the wyvern as ice. The wyvern gains 10% combat readiness when uh, a non-ice hero uh, turn happens. So, uh, when the wyvern slows itself down during the barrier phase, every time you give it 10% combat readiness because the wyvern slows itself down by quite a bit, that 10% combat readiness boost is uh, definitely uh, shortening your uh, your the time you will spend on that barrier phase. For uh, just quickly, like you could use a knight in front with uh, your healer it could be Angelica, she could be in the back line. You could have her uh, really quick. And uh, I mean, if you're lucky enough to have Angelica, you can have her in the front with the prophetic candlestick. Is uh, I would say the optimal uh, artifact is only a three star quite easy to get to uh, plus 30 I mean if you've been playing for uh, for a few months and you've been like lucky because sometimes you just like you're not lucky but still even at plus 15 it's uh, it's very good it's 30% chance when you uh, get attacked to uh, reduce your cooldown by one turn so yeah it will trigger quite often you're getting triple attack and uh, yeah, you could go with Knight in front with a Soul Weaver healing and then two damage dealers. You don't need attack buff. You could rely on just applying defense down debuff. The longer the fight drags on, the more attack the Wyvern has. This, uh, if you fail to break the barrier, this happens, deals damage to you. Dispel all your buffs and then huge amount of damage from the Shockwave afterwards. So you cannot rely on barrier or uh, defense. Uh, defense uh, buff and there's a triple attack every time he reduces your combat readiness by 10% you could have water's origin on your uh, soul weaver in front uh, to tank to help uh, yourself tank and counter this combat readiness decrease because uh, water's origin at plus 15 gives you 15% combat readiness every time you're attacked 
and try to uh, take between, let's say, uh, you need to take more than 20% of your uh, health and damage. And I would say that try to take like 21 to 25% damage so you get healed 8% uh, of your health back. So it's going to help you mitigate the damage and counter this combat readiness decrease. And there's the attack all, it dispels all debuff on the wyvern when he tail swing goes in barrier phase and uh, yeah decrease speed of the caster while a barrier is granted and activates dragon might that was a close one if the barrier is not destroyed then he does this uh, that AOE that attacks deals damage dispel all your uh, buffs and then deal the another huge spike in damage I mean the initial damage is not big it's the the shockwave afterward that deals a ton of damage So Chloe here, I mean, she's still like that. That damage from Magic Nell definitely helps. The thing is, like, if you're struggling, you could definitely rely on Chloe, and you could, let's say, manual, or you could, you could even turn off her skills on Wave One, and then turn uh, turn them on for Wave Two, so she uh, instantly applies Magic Nell. Uh, she will not use her skill 3 unless Magic Nell uh, is applied on the target, uh, on someone during that fight. So that that's a good uh, AI mechanic right there. But let me show you my gear. Now you don't have to rush into Wyvern 11. Uh, you can, like I said, just try to, uh, to heal, to stay alive from that uh, like if you fail to break the barrier from that big AOE attack uh, if you're using Aureus on your uh, knight it will definitely uh, lower the stat requirement to survive the damage you can uh, survive it with 7000 health and 700 defense but you're gonna be very close to dying and that damage could vary and the wyvern's attack goes up the longer you're fighting him so I would definitely uh, be running uh, more health or uh, defense to uh, to be able to survive that thing and if you're running Aureus of course like it's it will be a huge hit on your knight so it's almost like you wouldn't want to run Aureus if you have noble ult I would definitely carry that on your uh, frontliner your knight and uh, let me just show you my skill ups Kise Tarnar guard Chloe's got nothing Angelica so the gear just pause if I go too quick so I would say if you do have Chloe and you are struggling in uh, Wyvern definitely build her up she's a uh, she's a good hero and not only uh, in the Wyvern you can use her you can use her in raid the more health the, the target has the more damage your whole group will deal and really you could rely solely on Chloe and uh, Daydream Joker to uh, to take uh, take down bosses she's really a boss killer I uh, I will make a review later on and uh, I will talk about her multipliers and uh, more. It's gonna be more of an in-depth review and really like tell you where she shines and uh, exactly in which raid bosses she uh, she's good. So that was it. But yeah, her stats. I mean, I would get her. Uh, Quite a bit of speed so she can cycle through her turns if your group is able to down wave one and this thing is ready uh, as soon as possible that's good you could rely on this thing to uh to uh, break the barrier faster and even uh break it um, successfully before the boss uh, goes with that aoe dispel and use shockwave damage because you failed to break the barrier you could manual drop that uh, magic ball to apply magic nail and and it cannot be resisted so you don't need to focus on effectiveness and then you could go uh, 
could go all out. So yeah. Uh, so I'm not gonna talk more about group compositions in this, uh, this, this video. You can check out my other videos. I talked uh, quite a few times about group compositions at the end. So they will uh, be appearing on the screen now. And uh, that's gonna be it for this one. But yeah, having trouble on Wyvern or you're trying to speed up your runs, definitely consider uh, Chloe, especially if you don't have Kise. And maybe you don't want to invest in uh, Tarnar Guard. And I mean, you have other options. You can, instead of him, you can use Karen. Uh, you could even use uh, uh, Chaos uh, Sec Axe. He's a dark element, but still, if you only bring one uh, off element, it, you'll be fine. I mean, two, it's pushing it, really, especially if you're struggling. You can definitely use Clarissa instead of Tarnar Guard. Uh, the thing is, Tarnar Guard gives that 25% uh, combat readiness boost whenever he dual attacks. So, I mean, I really like his kit, really like his kit. And all as well as you saw what happened uh, in terms of his damage in my group composition, I do not have an attack buffer and he was uh, buffing his own attack. He's dropping defense down, which is uh, uh, doubling the damage output of your uh, team when you're attacking that target with defense down debuff. And whenever he's trigger uh, triggering uh, those dual attacks, like 75% chance to drop that defense down debuff it's only one turn but like just like think about it like you could build him on speed so he goes first and then you you have a lot of burst damage going in but you can make him slow as well and rely on his dual attacks and it seems to be working just fine and if you're struggling like you could auto and like if you don't have a high success rate you could just auto and turn our guard could like you could get that lucky uh, run where he just keeps on going with those dual attacks and I mean you're gonna have to pay attention to your uh, to your game but still it's definitely uh, gonna be possible to push uh, further in terms of speed and just uh, just I mean you can just yield that you won't lose your energy but uh, early game what I was doing is uh, I, I relied on Tarnar Guard and actually RAS to trigger the dual attack of Tarnar Guard and I was able to manual uh, some uh, much higher wyvern uh, stage levels than I was able to auto so I mean I did it did take quite, quite a bit of time but it was worth it and I was able to get uh, stronger gear, gear that way but uh, yeah there's quite a few uh, heroes that can trigger a dual attack but uh, yeah that's not the purpose of this video anyways Chloe definitely worth building and uh, yeah, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. I'm Astronox. Like, comment, and subscribe for more. Press the bell icon if you'd like to be notified whenever I release a new video. Peace out for now.